Hi, my name is Debbie Brooks and I'm here to talk to you about a decision I've made to participate in a clinical trial. I am um, the co-founder of the Michael J. Fox Foundation and over the last 11 years I've really come to um, appreciate and understand what it takes to uh, convert investments into new treatments. And in spending time with the Parkinson's patient community and with researchers and with industry professionals, I have just have this whole um, deeper understanding and, um, and kind of motivation to really uh, help find new solutions for how we're going to get treatments for the Parkinson's pain patient community. So I decided that not just as an observer and someone who professionally is, is being sitting around the table and thinking about how to get to these answers and, and do what we can to make clinical research um, uh, more available and kind of more relevant for patients, that it's just not enough to, for me to kind of sit back and think about what other people can do. I decided I actually should do it myself. I wanted to learn firsthand what participation in a clinical trial would be all about. So um, tomorrow I start. Um, I'm uh, going in for a screening visit um, for the Parkinson's Progression Markers Initiative Study. On my screening visit tomorrow, um, I have set aside six hours, which seems like a lot of time, um, but I heard directly from the coordinators what that day's going to be like, and it sounds pretty manageable. So this is just a screening visit. Um, I have to go through a series of assessments and evaluations to make sure I'm suitable for the trial. So I'm going to show up around 9 in the morning. Um, I'm gonna, uh, I have to fast. Um, nicely enough, they said they'll have coffee and cream set aside, and I have to bring a, my own snack, so that's good. Um, but I'm going to get there and get blood work um, drawn, and then it will, I think pretty much right out of the gates, I'm going to go and um, get an injection of radioactive material. Uh, I think that'll set me up for a, a neuroimaging scan that I'll do later in the day. Um, while we're waiting for that, um, that uh, imaging fluid to kind of work through into my brain, I suppose, um, I'm going to be doing a regular medical exam and family history. The most important part of the test for someone like me who doesn't have Parkinson's disease is to really do this neuroimaging scan. That scan is meant to indicate um, that I have proper functioning of dopamine neurons in my brain and um, one would expect that I do. I guess there is some uh, very small chance that that scan could show um, indications of uh, dopamine transport deficit that I'm not aware of. Um, if for some reason I was on my way to Parkinson's disease and didn't know it, um, I guess that's a pretty small probability, but that's something I could learn out of this assessment tomorrow. But otherwise, I expect that I will um, check out as a suitable control, and then um, I'll be back in a couple weeks for my baseline visit. So I was talking to my husband about the fact that I'm going to do this, and he said, you know, this is a lot. It's, you're talking about giving up several days a year, full days, going in and subjecting yourself to all sorts of tests and things that um, you don't really even need to do. You don't have Parkinson's disease. And he's right about that. I mean, I know that. Um, and I'm, I'm prepared to do that. But one of the reasons I'm prepared to do that is not only do I know it's important scientifically, but I, I see what we ask of Parkinson's patients every day or what Parkinson's patients need to um, think about and, and live with every day. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of work on the part of scientists. There's a lot of work on the part of the patients and the patient communities and their caregivers to really figure out and do what it takes to kind of help be part of answers and solutions. So for me to kind of step in and walk my own walk and, and, and go through this process, I think it's the least I could do.